Welcome to Flat Out Elected. My name is Rand Campbell. And, and I'm going to ask you guys, if you're going to watch this video and listen to this message, I ask that you do so intently and that you open your hearts up to this message because this is, this is going to be a real serious message for these times and for those of us that are truly seeking God. Because... You know, it's not, it's not a shock to those of us that are awake and aware to the times that we're in. That Christianity absolutely, 100% for sure, is under attack. But not just under attack in that, you know, there are atheists that, that disagree with, you know, there being a God. Or that there are Muslims that, that, don't, that don't believe in Christ. Or that there are different doctrines that argue true belief in Christ. I'm talking about a world right now as we speak that is, is heading in a very serious anti-Christian place. And, and we know this is happening. We're not, we're not oblivious to this. If you're awake and you understand about New World Order and the Illuminati and, and you know Satanism in this world, then you're aware of the fact that they are absolutely creating a new world order under a one world government, which will have as well a one world religion. If you're connecting the dots, you can very easily see where we're headed. And what I'm telling you is that Christianity is a target in these days. Islam isn't a target. Buddhism isn't a target. None of these other religions are targets. Atheism isn't a target. Christianity is 100% the target in these days. And, and don't forget, Jesus Christ said they hated him first. So this shouldn't come as a shock to you. But when I say hate, I'm not saying that, you know, people love their sin so much that they hate Christianity because they love their sin. Yes, that's true. People ask me all the time. Why don't people believe in God? Why don't people believe in Jesus Christ? And the answer is because they love their sin. And that's the bottom line. But it's not even that. that that's, that's, that's light compared to what is happening in the world. That's light compared to what is coming. Christianity is absolutely under attack. Christianity is absolutely the target. And has been the target since the Garden of Eden. This It has nothing to do with Islam. It's got nothing to do with being a Buddhist or an atheist or an agnostic. It's got everything to do with Christianity. It's got everything to do with Christ. All of these other religions are just deceptions to keep people from Christ. And it's done a magnificent job in doing so. But make no mistake about this, Christianity is, is going to be targeted even more so in the very near future. And if you think that you're safe in your Christianity, if you think, oh, no, 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 I'll never deny Christ, then ask yourself about Peter, because Peter denied Christ three times. And he knew Christ. He walked with Christ. He knew Christ. But he feared for his life and denied Christ as a result of fearing for his life. What makes you think in your Christianity that if given that situation, if confronted with whether or not you truly believe in Christ, whether or not you truly hold Christ at the center of your life, that you wouldn't deny Christ as well. He knew Christ. He walked with Christ and denied him. What is it about your Christianity? What is it about your belief in Jesus Christ that under any circumstance you would not deny Jesus Christ? In, in, in any circumstance, you would not deny your faith as a Christian. What, what, what is it about your faith? What is it about your integrity with Christ that no matter what the situation, no matter what should be confronted with you, that you would not deny Christ? Because I'm telling you, Jesus Christ said that many will come in his name and I'll spit you out like lukewarm water. You workers of inequity, I never knew you. He's talking about Christians. He's not going to say that to an atheist. He's not going to say that to a Muslim. He's not going to say that to a Hindu. He's not going to say that to an agnostic. That statement will be, will be spoken to Christians, people that believe that they were in a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's going to tell them, I never knew you. And I've said this many times. I'll say it again. I used to be a boxer, and I, I know a lot about Mike Tyson. I used to study his fights. I used to read his books, watch his movies. I knew everything about Mike Tyson. I can tell you everything there is to know about Mike Tyson, 
and lead you to believe that I knew him and that we were friends. An hour later, he could show up and you could say, you're not going to believe it. Your friend, Rand Campbell, just left. And he's going to go, Rand Campbell, who's he? And, and, and you're going to say, well, he's your friend. He's going to go, I don't, I don't remember him. And then you could show him a picture of me on YouTube and he's going to go, I never knew him. I never knew him. Because it doesn't matter how much you think you know about Christ. It doesn't matter how many times you've read the Bible. It doesn't matter whether you're a, 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 a theologian or whether you're a, a, a biblical know-it-all. Satan can spit out verses of the Bible and did so to Christ on the mountain. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't know your scripture. Absolutely, absolutely you should know your scripture and absolutely you should study yourself approved. But knowing scripture isn't going to save you. Knowing scripture isn't your foundation. It's not your anchor. Your anchor to salvation is Jesus Christ. Scripture is absolutely wonderful. The word of God is absolutely amazing. But it's going to mean nothing if you, don't, if you do not know Jesus Christ. And if Christ does not know you. And remember, Peter denied Christ. Peter, Peter absolutely said, I don't know him. I never knew him. Even though people say, yeah, yeah, you do know him. We've seen you with him. We've seen you with him. And he still said, no, 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 you got the wrong guy. It wasn't me. I, because he feared for his life. And I'm telling you right now, Christians are doing this watering down of their Christianity in order to fit into a world that hates them. There are Christians today that are watering down Christianity in order to be liked. To me, that's, that's, that's bordering denying Christ. And if you're that kind of Christian that you're willing to water down scripture and not take God and his word, if you're willing to take scripture and, and, and read it, manipulate it, and, and, and try to discern it in your own mind so that it fits your world desires and your worldview, then, then, then that shows the, the lack of integrity in your faith. If you have true faith in God, then you have true faith in his scripture and you don't need to try to manipulate the scripture or try to, to, to read the scripture in a way that fits your worldview or your world desires or your desire to be seen as a, a, a theologian or a scholar that you would be respected as somebody of great intelligence sitting in a pew in a church. Your, your faith, your Christianity is going to be based 100% on Christ knowing you and you knowing him and you allowing him to be the center of your life and that he would be the vine and you would be the branch. Many, many Christians are going to get confronted with whether or not they truly believe in God, whether or not they truly believe in Jesus Christ. And, and if they were put in a tough enough situation, they would deny Christ just like Peter did. If, if, if most Christians today were, were, were held at gunpoint and told to deny Christ, I can assure you most Christians today would be so scared to lose their lives here that they would deny Christ in order to save their own lives because they don't truly believe that they're saved in Christ and that life on the other side of revelation is much greater than life here. People love this world. People love these lives. People do not understand that true Christianity is going to come down to your faith. It's going to come down to your belief. It's going to come down to your strength. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that we don't have a just God and a merciful God. Of course we do. But what I'm telling you is that they are removing Christianity as we speak from this world. They started by removing the Lord's Prayer out of schools, taking pictures of Jesus out of schools and courtrooms, taking the Ten Commandments out of courtrooms. I mean, it's been a slow process, but that's how it works. That's how they get you to accept things. That's how they get the world to condone these types of behaviors. They do it slowly. It's like boiling a frog. You put it in cold water and you slowly heat the water until you boil the frog. And it doesn't even know that it's being boiled. And that's exactly what's happening. And listen to this. In all relationships, the one who loves the least controls the relationship. I could go into anybody's home and within 15 to 20 minutes, I can tell you who's in control of the relationship by the way that they interact with one another and, and generally by who's holding the remote control. Whoever's holding the remote control all night on the couch generally has control in the relationship and therefore, I can assure you, they love the least. They, 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 they could care less if the relationship ended. The one that loves the least 
has the least to lose. And you'll never outlove God. God loves you more than you'll ever love him. You can never, ever, ever put your love up against the amount of love God has for you. So make no mistake about this. You are in control of your relationship with God. You are in control of your relationship with God. Think about that for a second. What does your life say about how much you love God? What does your life say about how much you love the Lord? How, what does your life say about how, how, how grateful you are for salvation? If a gun was put to your head, would you deny Christ? If you were being thrown into a FEMA camp, or if you were being collected, as I believe Christians may be one day, and, and, and held captive, would you deny Christ? Would you deny your faith? Would you deny being a Christian to save your life? Remember, he who loves the world does not have the love of the Father within him. You have to be willing to lose your life in this world. Your life in this world is nothing. The only thing of any value in this world is salvation, period, dot, period. And, and, and we have to really, really consider the integrity of our spiritual relationship with the Lord. We have to ask ourselves, are we going to be a Peter? Are we going to deny Christ when we get confronted with a situation that scares us? Or are you going to trust in, in the Lord? How about when the disciples were in the boat and they were fearful for their lives because of the storm? And, and they woke Christ up and, and he said, Oh, ye of little faith. How strong is your faith in Christ? Are you prepared for what's coming? Are you spiritually ready for what's coming? Are you digging into your scripture? Are you digging into your prayer life? Are you digging into your worship? Because God said that he seeks those that worship in truth and in spirit. Are you worshiping in truth and in spirit? Or are you worshiping in a worldly way? Are you worshiping in, in truth? Are you worshiping in, in, in the true knowledge of the world that we are in? Are you worshiping God? Are you worshiping your Lord and Savior on a daily basis? Are you strengthening your spiritual life? Are you removing the things of the world so that you can focus more on your relationship with Jesus Christ? Because that's what it's going to come down to. It's going to come down to you having strengthened your spiritual life with Christ. Christ wants to know you. Now, how does he know you? He said this. He said, how you speak of me in this world is how, I will, is how I'll speak to the Father. Jesus Christ said, what you do unto the least, you do unto me. He wants to know you. But he's not going to know you if, if, you're not, if you're not working on your relationship with him. And make no mistake about this, neither. He, 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 he wants your full attention. He needs your full attention. And guess what? You need his full abundance in spiritual strength in order to deal with this spiritual warfare. You need Christ more than anything right now in this world. You don't need a new TV. You don't need a new car. You don't need a new house. You need a stronger relationship with Christ. Because what's coming is your, your entire faith, your entire relationship with Christ is going to be dependent on the strength of that relationship. Never forget, Peter knew Christ. He knew him. He walked with him. When, 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 when he was standing there, he was looking at Christ when he denied him. If you fear for your life over your faith, over your salvation, if you love your life more than you love Christ, and you get challenged with that, of which is going to come, I'm telling you, it's going to come, it's heading in that direction. Are you ready for this? Are you spiritually sound? Are you spiritually strong? Because things are going to happen and you're not going to be able to imagine. It's going to be outside of your imagination what's coming for Christians. Right now, we're just seeing the light end of this. But make no mistake, it's coming. And I ask that you guys take this seriously and get grounded in your relationship with Christ and start being very serious about your, 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 your worship, your prayer, your time with God. Get alone with your Bible. Get alone with your Bible. And ask God to reveal the truths to you. Because I'm telling you where we're heading is, 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 isn't good. Isn't good. And it's happening fast. 
Because don't forget, also in Scripture, time is sped up that even the elect would survive. And I'm telling you, time has sped up. And, and these events are happening quicker and quicker and quicker. And, and Satan is having a hard time keeping up to God's clock because God's in control of the clock. God's in control of all things. And God sped up this clock and Satan's having a hard time keeping up with it. But make no mistake about it, guys. It's time for us to get real serious about our relationship with Jesus Christ. I pray for you guys. I love you and I, I'm so grateful and so thankful for you guys. And I'm so thankful that we're able to edify one another and, and, and help one another and teach one another and, 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 and that the Lord can bless each of us as a family. Because this is a family. Flat Out Elect is a family. This isn't, this isn't just my channel. This is our channel. This is where we meet to talk and to work things out. And I'm so grateful that you've come here to do that. You guys help me in a big way. You have no idea how much strength you give me when I see your comments in these videos, when I see the likes, the likes, and when I, when I, when I see that you guys actually come and view this channel, it gives me a great deal of strength. And I, I'm so grateful for that. If you guys enjoy the videos, if, 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 if you really enjoy them, sub this channel, share the videos, hit the like button, hit the, the, the bell for updates. Join Flat Out Elected too. Let's, let's, let's build that channel as a backup. And let's also join Flat Out Elected, the, the community on G+. And as well, look in the description for ways to help others. And if it's in your heart, become a Patreon to this channel. I ask that God bless you guys. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I ask that God seriously bless you. You guys take care of yourselves. Is when you talking to the, to the principalities and reminding the powers and telling them who you are and what's going to happen. That's when you get an attitude. We have access to God with boldness and confidence. We can go boldly to the throne of God. We can go confidently to him. But what does the devil do? He keeps bringing up your past. He keeps bringing up your failures. He keeps bringing up your shortcomings. I'm not going to God on the basis of my righteousness. Not my righteousness. I'm going on the basis of his righteousness and who he is.